Hello friends, welcome to Insights Icon Initiative. In today's video, we are going to discuss about MS Swami Nathan. You all know that we come across this name since our school days, especially in relation to agriculture and green revolution. For further discussion, before that, first we will see the syllabus mapping, then we will see the video components. Syllabus mapping is, this particular topic is related to Gender Studies Paper 3, that is Major Crops, Minimum Support Price, and food security. Apart from this, it is also relevant to, you know, like current affairs in prelims point of view. Video components. In this particular video, our main focused areas are, first we will discuss why it is in news. You know that it is very unfortunate to hear that MS Swami Nathan, I mean, who renowned agriculture scientist as well as former Rajya Sabha member and who served in various positions. It is very unfortunate to hear that he passed away. First, we will discuss about his life, where he born, and what kind of awards he received. Then we will discuss about what is Green Revolution and what are the contributions of M.S. Swaminathan and Naaman Borlaag to Green Revolution. Along with that, we will also discuss about what are the positives of the Green Revolution and what are the challenges related to Green Revolution. Later, we will discuss about M.S. Swaminathan Chairman as National Commission on Farmers. Actually, it was very popular for recommending minimum support price, MSP. We will discuss about that. Then we will discuss in the last, I mean, last minutes of this particular video, we will discuss about various revolutions, such as, you know, like white revolution, blue revolution, brown revolution, various revolution, and they are related to what? So these are the video components you can expect in this video. First, without any further delay, let us see why it is in news. You know that M.S. Swaminathan, the legendary agriculture scientist, has passed away. He is very popularly known for Green Revolution and to introduce Green Revolution, he worked with Norman Borlaug. Norman Borlaug from Mexico. And he directed the Green Revolution in India along with Norman Borlaug in 1960s, in mid-1960s. Because of his efforts, India was able to overcome the food shortage. You know that. You know, if you remember, 1960s is the time India was going through a lot of economic crisis and political crisis also. 1962, Indochina War and 1965, India-Pakistan War. That means, obviously, two successive wars within the span of three years means we can understand what kind of negative effect it will be on the economy. And at the same time, during this time in 1964, Jawaharlal Nehru died. 1966, Lal Bahadur Shastri died. So two prominent leaders also India lost. So India was experiencing economic crisis and political crisis. And because of this drought, India was also experiencing the food crisis. So during that time, the Green Revolution introduced by M. S. Swaminathan, it played a very, very important role. It is undeniable fact. Let us see some early, I mean, some information regarding the early life and education related to M. S. Swaminathan. M. S. Swaminathan was born in 1925. You know, the students, 1925 was the time. This was after the ending of non-cooperation movement in 1922. It was a time where Gandhiji was much involved in the temple entry movement in India. He was born in Tamil Nadu. Initially tried to establish himself uh, in the career of civil services. Of course, he cleared the civil services because, but because of the interest in agriculture and agriculture research. Uh, so, and, and one more thing is he was inspired by the Quit India movement and Bengal famine during 1942 to 1943. Because of these incidents, his inspiration drawn towards agriculture research and he ventured into the agriculture research. Initially, he started his journey by enrolling in the Agriculture College in Coimbatore to pursue his interest in agriculture. Tell me students, agriculture comes under which list of the Schedule 7? You know that Schedule 7 deals with the distribution of legislative subjects between the Union and States. Okay? So, agriculture comes under which list? Then, M. S. Swaminathan in various roles. He acted as Chairman of the Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO, between 1985 to 1985. You know, uh, 1981 to 1985. You know that FAO headquarters present in Rome, Italy. Majority of the food organizations, they are based in Rome. Next, he also acted as president for IUCN, International Union for Conservation of Nature, and Worldwide Fund for Nature. He also acted as director general for 
Indian Council of Agriculture Research, ICAR. You must remember that in India, every agriculture university or every agriculture college, they must get accreditation from this particular body. He also acted as Director General for International Rice Research Institute. Tell me students, where is this located? International Rice Research Institute. It is based on which country? Some of the awards and recognition given to M.S. Swaminathan. Of course, there are plenty of awards given to him. Out of that, some of the prominent awards we are going to see. Shanti Swaru Bhatnagar Award, 1961. Actually, it is the highest award given to the scientist who works, you know, like uh, who contributes a lot in the scientific fields. Padma Sri, Padma Bhushan and Padma Vibhushan, highest one. After then, Bharat Radha only. H.K. Firodia Award, Lal Bahadur Shastri National Award, Indira Gandhi Prize. First World Food Prize. Actually, it is considered as equivalent to Nobel Prize in food area. Then UNEP describes him as a father of economic ecology. If you remember, United Nations Environment Program, it is based in Kenya, Nairobi. United Nations Environment Program. Raman Megasese Award. This Raman Megasese Award generally, uh, it is awarded by Philippines. You know that uh, for her, for her service during the COVID time, former Minister of Kerala, former Health Minister of Kerala, Shailaja was also awarded with Raman Magasis Award. Of course, she rejected to take that award due to the ideological differences. But during that time, this award was very popular. Albert Einstein World Science Award. In 1999, Times Magazine announced 20 most influential Asian people of the 20th century. Out of the 20 people from Asia, three members featured from India. Out of those three, Two members were Mahatma Gandhi and Ravindranath Tagore. The third person is M.S. Swaminathan. As of 2016, he was awarded with 33 national and 32 international awards. You can understand his work towards the agriculture. Next, M.S. Swaminathan. He was also acted as chairman of the National Commission on Farmers, NCF 2004. Actually, NCF is very popular for recommending MSP. You know, MSP stands for Minimum Support Price. Recently, farm protest was all about, they demanded that statutory status should be given to the minimum support price. And according to this MS Swaminathan committee, MSP should be, it should be at least 50% higher than the total input cost to the farmers. If that will be implemented, it is going to be very profitable to the farmers. Still, government is not implementing that. And he coined the term Green Revolution, Evergreen Revolution in 1990. This Evergreen Revolution is all about improving the productivity without the associated ecological harm. You can call it as sustainable improving in the productivity. He was nominated to the parliament to Rajya Sabha between 2007 to 2013. You know that students, president nominates to, I mean, 12 members to Rajya Sabha who are expertise in the fields of science, literature, social service and arts. In the science category, M.S. Swaminathan was nominated by the president. Green Revolution. Green Revolution is all about Im increasing the production and productivity of the food grains. Remember, Green Revolution is applicable only to the food crops. It is not related to the commercial crops. That you have to remember. And because of this Green Revolution, Crops which majorly benefited are rice, wheat. After that, maize and basra. These are the crops which benefited a lot. Of course, Green Revolution is having some uh, challenges or associated risks also. We will discuss what are they. Across the globe, Norman Borla considered as father of Green Revolution, whereas in India, M.S. Swaminathan considered as Green Revolution because of his efforts in introducing Green Revolution in India. This Green Revolution changed India's status from food deficient country to world's leading agriculture nations. And when India got independence at that time, we used to import food grains from USA. From that, now we reach to the level that we are exporting. Recently, you might have known that when Egypt was struggling to get wheat because of the delay in the Black Sea grain deal, India offered this wheat to uh, Egypt. Even India exported wheat to Afghanistan also through Chabahar port. So, so, we came way ahead in this food production. Objectives of the Green Revolution to address the India's hunger crisis, to improve the 
agriculture modernization this agriculture modernization you should remember article 48 in the dpsp also deals with the, that government should encourage agriculture on the modern lines and animal husbandry also should be on the modern lines to provide more employment the main objective of green revolution to produce strong varieties which can be drought resistant varieties and globalization of the agriculture world these are some of the objectives of green revolution and basic elements expansion of the crop area double cropping system that means cropping twice in a same land in one calendar year using seeds with improved genetics so that the production and productivity can be improved compared to the previous times positive impacts of course green revolution changed the entire face of the indian agriculture no doubt in that when now we become the food surplus just because of the contribution of green revolution actually green revolution was much suitable for the areas where irrigation facilities are very good that is the reason green revolution fruits were enjoyed by the western up in north india and in south india coastal areas such as andhra pradesh and tamil nadu these are the areas enjoyed the fruits of green revolution increase in the crop production benefits are reduction in the imp import of food grains benefit to the farmers industrial growth especially the industries which are depend on the this food processing and rural employment obviously when agriculture is on the positive growth it adds a lot of employment in the rural areas now we'll see some of the negative impact obviously non food grains not consider much it is only related to the high yielding variety seeds other seeds not covered in the green revolution regional disparities wherever the irrigation facilities were there those areas able to capture the benefits of the green revolution and rest of the areas unable to get the benefits out of this green revolution that is also there it required excessive usage of water so the ground water exploitation was done along with that excessive using of the fertilizers and pesticides it led to the salinity of water under ground water that is also one of the disadvantage and that resulted to you know like percolation of the chemicals into the underground water in long term it may lead to health hazard as well some of the different types of revolutions black revolution related to petroleum blue fish brown revolution leather products golden revolution jute golden fiber revolution i mean this golden revolution fruits and horticulture green revolution food grains gray revolution fertilizers pink revolution onion products red revolution meat and tomato around potato fiber revolution cotton silver egg white revolution operation floods tell me students who was very popular for related to operation flood who contributed a lot yellow revolution oil seeds evergreen revolution is the overall development of agriculture and the rainbow re revolution related to agriculture horticulture forestry sugarcane fishery poultry and animal husbandry these are various revolutions and associated areas uh, we'll see the yesterday's video question which among the following books is not written by bhagat singh prison diary it is not related to bhagat singh rest of the three books are related to bhagat singh now let us see today's video question let's see today's video question which of the following is a rabi crop tell me students out of these main question in spite of having several achievement the green revolution has several defects so this main question is mainly emphasizing on the challenges of the green revolution or the negative impacts of the green revolution try to write answer to this as we reach to the end of this video we will try to quickly revise what we discussed in this video in this video we discussed about early life of the ms swaminathan awards and achievements of ms swaminathan various roles held by ms swaminathan what is green revolution and how green revolution changed indian agriculture contributions of norman borlaug and we also discussed about various revolutions and their focused area so this is and of course we also discussed about objectives of green revolution and challenges faced in the green revolution so this is the detailed analysis regarding the ms swaminathan and his contribution to the indian agriculture